This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, remember when my producer Kim Brandt sent me a DVD of Pinocchio with Sandy Duncan? You sent me a copy of Pinocchio starring Sandy Duncan. <laughs> oh, wow. We're not going to see that today. We're going to look at another movie that she sent in that package. The Bad Seed. Our movie opens at a dark, spooky lake. The future site of a murder. I'm honestly expecting Vincent Price to begin narrating. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Then things are immediately switched up to a bright, cheery day before anything scary can happen. Not sure what the point of that was. If the idea is that we're not supposed to anticipate anything scary happening, why not open on more benign credits? Anyway, Colonel Kenneth Penmark bids goodbye to his wife, Christine, as he leaves for Washington on business. Probably something to do with the discovery of a giant deadly mantis, I'd wager. Hi, folks. Don't worry, I'll be in the picture from here on in. What do you give me if I give you a basket of kisses? I'll give you a basket of hugs. <laughs> I'll miss your hugs. I'll miss your kisses, Daddy. You're so big and strong. See my effect on girls? Uh, baby? It was a simpler time. This is not a Bob show. Okay... This little Stepford daughter is Rhoda, who is so wonderful and precious that she is constantly being given gifts by their landlady. Look, Mommy! Oh, Monica, what have you given her now? <laughs> it's a pair of dark glasses to keep the sun out of those pretty blue eyes, and the rhinestones to frame them in. And for some reason, the music suddenly got very tense. Did a pair of sunglasses kill Christine's parents or something? We then meet Leroy, who watches the place while the master is away. Morning, Miss Zappity. When I was in school, we didn't have no picnics. I don't care what you didn't have. On top of their landlady Monica spoiling Rhoda just because, she wanted to help make her feel better because there was an award for penmanship in her class, which she didn't win. It's the only gold medal Miss Fern gives. And it was really mine. Everybody knew I wrote the best hand, and I should have had it. Rhoda. I just don't see how Claude Daigle got oh, the medal. Rhoda, Rhoda, these things happen to us all the time. And when they do, we simply accept them. Now I've told you, darling, try to forget it. I'm sorry, I know you don't like people pawing over you. It was mine! The medal was mine! It was mine! I guarantee that by movie's end, somebody's gonna be wearing somebody's skin. Christine takes Rhoda to her class picnic at the lake, which the kids aren't allowed to go near, which makes me wonder what's the point of even having the picnic here in the first place. Christine goes home to have lunch with Monica and some of her friends when they hear a disturbing broadcast on the radio. I have been asked to announce that one of the children on the annual picnic of the Fern Country Day School was accidentally drowned in the bay early this noon. The name of the victim is being withheld until the parents are first notified. In the meantime, if any of our listeners have children at the Fern Country Day School, feel free to panic until further notice. Yes, we now have the full story on the Fern School drowning. We are now authorized to give you the name of the victim. It was eight-year-old Claude Daigle, the only child of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Daigle of 126 Willow Street. He appears to have fallen into the water from the abandoned pier on the Fern property. It is a mystery how the little boy got on the pier, for all the children had been forbidden to play near or on it. But his body was found off the end of the landing, wedged among the pilings. 
The guard who brought up the body applied artificial respiration, but without result. There were bruises on the forehead and hands, but it was assumed that these were caused by the body washing against the pilings. And on a completely unrelated note, the award for best penmanship has been reappropriated to Rhoda Penmark. She just wanted me to make sure you all knew that. Christine is worried about how Rhoda is taking the news, but she seems disturbingly fine. We didn't really have our lunch because Claude Daigle was drowned. That was your low point of the day? That you didn't get lunch? Hey now, a girl's gotta eat. It can't be all murder and drowning. Good point. So they continue on with their lives as if nothing ever happened, but Christine can't help but suspect that Rhoda had something to do with the accident. Mommy? What? Why aren't you reading? Oh, I, I was just thinking, I guess. About what? The accident? I'll close my eyes, but I won't be asleep. I know. And then the night answered her. I thank you, fair lady, for I'm not only hungry and thirsty, but I'm lost within the forest. And then he let his paw free graze nearby, and he feasted with the lady who gave him loving looks, sweeter than the wine from the flagon, though the wine was sweet and strong. And then the mother continued reading, terrified for her life, but unable to articulate why. But Christine isn't the only one to suspect Rhoda. Apparently she made such a fuss over that penmanship award that her teacher... And even Claude's mother thinks that she did it. You realize we followed you. We shouldn't have done it. I'm a little drunk. I guess you never get a little drunk. That's right. I'm a little drunk. You'd be drunk, too, if you'd lost your boy. My Kenny used to sing and dance. I'm sorry for poking fun, because while South Park did the same thing for laughs, it's pretty sad seeing this mother come unglued like she does. But the cat's out of the bag as Christine finds the medal in Rhoda's room. Of course, she makes up some bullcrap story to cover her ass, and Christine believes her hook, line, and sinker. Oh, I've got the prettiest mother. I've got the nicest mother. Oh, I have such a pretty mother. Such a wonderful mother. So things continue on their merry way as if nothing is wrong. Now there's a little ray of sunshine, that one. Ooh, I've seen her stormy. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, but she's going to make some man very happy. Okay, you can stop talking about how infatuated you are with that little girl now. Eventually, Leroy starts poking his nose in where Rhoda doesn't want him to, and he says that no matter how good a job she thinks she does of cleaning up the scene of a crime, there's always going to be something that'll lead the police back to her. So what does she do? She locks him in the cellar and lights it on fire. It sounded like somebody shouting for help. It sounded close by. You want to go find out who's calling for help? I know it's the 50s and everything is so delightfully pleasant, but come on! The noose is beginning to tighten, but Rhoda is still Christine's little girl. So what does she do? She slips her a few sleeping pills too many, and then she puts herself to bed. Unfortunately, the gunshot alerts Monica to Rhoda's would-be murder, and they're able to save her and Christine in time. Unluckiest lucky shot ever. After playing up to her dad about how ever so happy she is that she's alright, and she'll get to be with the best daddy in the whole wide world again, she goes back to the lake because she thinks she might have left some evidence behind that would link the crime back to her. And then... <laughs> Okay. What's weird is that this story was originally a book that was later adapted into a play, and the play was the basis for the movie. The play ends with Rhoda hugging her father as she smiles creepily at the audience, 
and it's all too easy for me to imagine that ending working perfectly well for this movie. What the hell's up with her randomly getting struck by lightning? Was the movie produced by the guy who finished financing Bride of the Monster? I want the movie to end with a big explosion. Sky full of smoke. Yes. But it ends with Rhoda smiling creepily at the audience. Not anymore. Then the movie has the cast do a curtain call because... I don't know, it doesn't know it's a movie? It thinks it's the original play? Then the movie truly ends with a request from the producers that we don't divulge the climax of the story. Oh. Crap. Well, I already reviewed it. I can't unreview it. Sorry. So that was The Bad Seed, which is paradoxically pretty damn good. The acting is top-notch, and it's nice knowing that many of the original stage actors had the chance to return to these roles on film. The story is simple but effective, it's filled with suspenseful moments, that Leroy guy was delightfully creepy, and while that ending might have come out of nowhere, I would highly recommend you see this movie for yourselves. So happy belated birthday, Kim Brandt! I really enjoyed this movie, and I hope that you enjoyed watching this review. See you later!